بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم وأستغفرك لمن علم ما الله سبحانه وتعالى بلس صوّ وثعم نافع رزقاً طيب وعملاً متقبلاً and bless us with ikhlas, with the bad Allah Sunnah and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The dunya, this life, this world, has so many distractions and so many things to sidetrack us from the Sirat Mustaqim, from the straight path. And as we're approaching the end of Ramadan, we need to even become more adherent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. And this is advice first and foremost to myself and then others to not be distracted by the dunya and to strive to make itikaf and do those other acts of ibadah, qiyam al-layl, focusing in your fasting, reading Qur'an often, dhikr, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are so many things in this worldly life that are placed around us to distract us. For example, some people are tested with a fitna of wealth, with money, with struggling to find a decent livelihood, or that they want more, or that they're never satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. So that's a fitna for them. And they have to put that in perspective and suffice themselves with the halal, the lawful things, and avoid the muharramat. And be thankful to their, and grateful to their Lord for what they've been given. And some people, they're tested with, for example, as men, they're tested with the women. They're tested with being distracted by women, constantly speaking and looking at women, looking at the muharramat. And de perhaps depending on their situation, if they're married or they're not married, keeping things in and being grateful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. If they are if they have a spouse to be grateful and thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a spouse. And if they are not blessed to have a spouse, a wife, then being patient and grateful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them from their health and from the halal means of dealing with not having a spouse by fasting, etc. The point being is this dunya, as the Prophet wasallam said, a dunya sijin al mu'min wa al kafir, that this, this worldly life is the prison of the believer and it is the paradise of the disbeliever. Because the believer makes sacrifices to keep within the meat, the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay with the halal. And on the other hand, the disbeliever indulges in whatever they please. And especially those people who have no religious bounds or very little morality then they indulge in whatever pleases them. For example, now it has become the trend in many Western societies for women to take to, to do as men have done traditionally in the past and have many partners. So much so that they even have a type of marriage that they consider it a type of mar marital bond, poly and amorous or something like this, poly polyamorous, where the woman has many male partners as well. So it shows you how people follow their vain desires. There's no more bounds. 
And as the Prophet ﷺ said, that if you have no shame, then do as you please. فَإِنَّمْ يَسْتَحِي فَتَفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتْ You know, if you don't have any shame, then do as you please. Because after misguidance, there can only be misguidance. And that's why I, I, I kept reflecting on the ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nazi'ah speaks about the one who restrains their desires and that their reward will be paradise. And the person who indulges in their di their desires and, and takes and loves this worldly life more than the hereafter then their reward is jahim, the hellfire. Wa'iyadu billah min dalika. So let's listen to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, and we're going to look at this tafsir as briefly as we can from Imam Tabari. It's a very beautiful uh, statements and tafsir that, that I came across with regards to this ayat. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitab al kareem Famma man tagha wa athar al hayat al dunya Fainna al jahim hi al ma'wa وَمَا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَاهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم And as for the one who transgresses and prefers the life of this world then jahim will be his destination meaning the hellfire and as for the one who is fearful of the position of his Lord over him and prohibits himself from his desires, then paradise will be his abode. Imam Tabari said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his tafsir of this ayat, he said, Yaqulu Ta'ala Dhakarahu Dhikruhu. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَطَى عَلَى رَبِّهِ وَعَسَاهُ وَاسْتَكْبَرَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ And he said, and as for the one who is, who is disobedient to his Lord and is arrogant regards to the worship of him. Then he mentioned a riwayah. He said, "Hadathani Muhammad ibn Amru. Qala hadathana Abu Asim. Qala hadathana Isa. Wa hadathani Harith. Qala hadathana Hassan. Qala hadathana Raka. Jamian an ibn Abi Najih." عن مجاهر قوله طغى فقال أو قال عصا. so he mentioned the narrators up to the chain of narration to مجاهد one of the تابعين and he said when asked about طغى you know the meaning طغى in the verse where Allah سبحانه وتعالى says فأما من طغى meaning the one who transgressed, that he said, Mujahid said about this, Asa, as the meaning, the person who is disobedient. And the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he prefers the life of this world, he said, وَمَا عَدَّ اللَّهُ فِيهَا لِأَوْلِيَائِهِ So he said that regarding the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and that he prefers the life of this world that it means that he, that he enjoys the, the, the worldly life. The, the life he, he enjoys and prefers the worldly life to the esteem and honor of the hereafter and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for him 
as prepared from the hereafter for his friends, meaning those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, his awliya, those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, loves and who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are the friends of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the beloved servants. فَعَمَلَ لِلدُّنْيَا وَسَعَ لَهَا And he says, and they, the person who prefers the akhirah, that they do, do their work strictly for the dunya. And they strive for it. وَتَرْكَ عَمَلَ الْآخِرَةِ And they leave the, the deeds for the akhirah. So they leave striving for the akhirah. And then he said, قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى so then his destination is the hellfire, or the, it is Jahim. Jahim is his abode. And so then he said, فَإِنَّ النَّارُ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي اسْمَهَا الْجَحِيمِ هِيَ مَنْزَلَهُ وَمَعْوَاهُ وَمَصِيرُهُ الَّذِي يُصِيرُ إِلَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So he said, as regarding Jahim being his abode, he said that it is the fire of Allah, which is called Al Jahim, and it is the place and the destination, and the place the person is uh, striving or heading in the direction to attain it on the day of judgment, meaning that this person, they're doing the deeds of the fire and they're heading towards the fire, which they will get because it's their abode on the day of judgment. And as for the one who fears the place of his Lord, and he prohibits himself from his desires. And the reason I said the place of his Lord, meaning the manzal, the makan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge over him on the day of judgment. So then he said, فَتْقَاهُ بِإِدَا فَرَائِدِهِ وَإِجْتِنَاب مَعَاسِهِ مَعَاسِهِ So he said, and as for the one who fears being asked by his Lord when he will be standing on the day of judgment before him, and he feared not doing the wajib deeds and he feared by staying away from the uh, the sin the the sins those things which are sinful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah hates and then he said wanaha nafsa an al hawa and that he prohibits himself from his desires. Imam Tabari said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Yaqul, Wanaha nafsuhu an hawa an hawaihi an hawaiha fima yakrahu Allah wala yardahu minha. Then this one he prohibits himself from his desires. From those things which Allah hates and is not pleased with. So he warns himself against this. And he he differs with his own desires, which are in opposition to what his Lord has commanded him. Then his reward 
then paradise is his abode. Yakul fa innal jannah hiya ma'wahu wa manzalahu yawm al-qiyamah. And Imam Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala said that Mujahid said that verily his verily paradise is his abode and is his place on the day of judgment. So that shows us regarding those ayats the place of the person who prohibits his self from indulging in the dunya excessively and making the dunya his end making the dunya his end at the expense of the akhirah, the one who leaves his akhirah for this worldly life. That does not mean that we don't strive in the dunya to take care of our families, to do the halal, to do the things, and try to achieve positive results in this world. But it should be also with the goal of the akhirah and not at the expense of the hereafter and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be the inheritors of Jannah to Fardos wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam